Hello and welcome to this tutorial which takes you through some of the basics of using Tokyo Pipinator, the new effect for creating picture-in-picture -picture design and animation inside Final Cut Pro 10, without the need for keyframing. You may think of picture-in-picture -picture as simply an effect to overlay a smaller picture over another background, but there's a whole lot more to Tokyo Pipinator than that. You can think of it as an advanced 3D DVE with its own built-in animation with the big advantage that all the animation is menu-driven, and that means no complicated keyframing. While you can easily perform any standard picture-in-picture -picture task, you can also use it for animating stills, titles, and graphics, or by stacking up multiple versions of the effect, you can very quickly and easily build up elaborate multi-image composites. So let's take a closer look. There are five modules in all, but let's start by taking a look at Pipinator Pro. We'll load up the effect by dragging it from the effects browser onto our chosen clip. The first thing you'll notice are these two coloured lines that link up these five on-screen controls. The red line shows you the animation path for the incoming motion, the blue line shows you the outgoing path, and the point where they meet in the middle is the position for the hold phase. If I scrub through the timeline, you'll see the image follows the path we've marked out. Now let's look at setting up our first animation. I'm going to set the hold position control over here at the bottom right, and I'll have my frame arrive from off screen at the left. And then we'll send it off screen via the top corner like so. And we'll adjust the midpoints. Now I don't much like the scale of the frame once it's arrived, so let's adjust that using the hold scale control. About 35% should work better. And let's set the start scale to zero so it arrives from nothing. I'd like to slow down the arrive animation as it's too quick for my liking. So I'll come over here and adjust the speed arrive. If I go for a value of two, that'll take twice as long. So let's see how that plays. That's looking better, but I'd like to make it a lot more interesting. How about some rotation? I want to have my frame spin along the X axis as it arrives. So I'll use the X arrive rotation control and set it to roughly minus 300 and see how that looks. But what if I wanted it to land at a more interesting angle? Let's use the Y rotation control to set a value of about minus 20, like so. I might even try a small amount of Z rotation. We don't need much, just something like minus two. You know what though, there's too much dead space to the right of the boat in the foreground. I'd really like to crop that off. We'll come down to the crop left right hold control and set a value of 0.4 and we've got the desired aspect ratio. But because our original shot is composed with the boat on the left hand side, we're losing it out of the frame. That too is very easily corrected. All we have to do is to come down to the offset controls and adjust the X offset hold till we get the framing we like. Now let's scale the hold position back up quite a bit since we've made ourselves a lot more room. We can go all the way to 75% with a bit of adjustment to the hold position. Let's see how that plays back. I don't think I want that outgoing animation anymore, so I'm going to set the depart value to zero and that will turn it off altogether. Now let's jazz things up a bit further. I'm going to go for a border look that I quite like to use. I'm going to increase the border width to about 40 and then set the blend mode to overlay. Next I'll come down and set the corner roundness for the hold position. Let's go for a value of four. And already that's starting to feel more interesting. But there's one thing I'm not liking, and that's the way that the frame gets locked into a static position during the hold phase. Well, the good news is that that's very easy to address. And here's where the drift controls come into play. Let's first of all look at having some scale drift. Let's go for a value of minus 10, so the frame drifts gently away from us. That's already got much more interest, but how about some Y rotation as well? and some Z to keep things interesting. And finally, some positional drift. The default direction for the drift is to the left, 
but if we wanted to change that, we could use the Drift Direction pop-up menu and choose a different option. So how's that looking? Not bad at all, but you'd probably want to tweak some of those parameters to get them working just right. And now you know enough to see just how quick and easy that would be. Before we finish, let's just have a quick roundup of the other module options. We've been looking at Pippinator Pro, which has the full range of controls, but which may be a bit daunting as a starting point, which is why there's a Pippinator Lite, which gives you most of the same functions, but with fewer parameters. Pippinator Hold simplifies the process if you don't want either the incoming or outgoing motion phases, while still having control over all the other animation features. And lastly, there are the two full screen options. From to full screen is optimized for situations where you want to dynamically scale your image down from full screen and back up again at the end. I'm going to drop it onto my clip and the job is done in an instant. Let's look at the result. The simplified on-screen control means that all you have to do is pick a position for the hold phase and everything else is taken care of. The other full screen option, to from full screen, does the reverse animation, taking your image up to full screen and back down again at the end. So that's it. This has just been a quick overview to get you started. Don't forget that although we've only looked at single image composites in this video, you can easily stack up multiple layers of the effect to create elaborate custom composites. If you want to explore the effect further, make sure you download the free trial version from FX Factory and discover for yourself how much it can do and how simple it is to use. Thanks for watching.